All right guys, Jimmy with Mountain Bike Travel Review and welcome back to Beginner Bike Sessions with Brian. That Be is me. Brian. Brian, if you haven't seen the other videos, is just a couple months in, so we're doing some quick tutorial videos for raw beginners to help you get out there and know the basics on the trails. On this episode, we're gonna focus on knowing the basic nuances of your bike and the basic functions of your bike on your wait, first ride. Wait, 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 Jimmy, let me stop you right there. Let's talk what we're really gonna be about. Let's watch Brian crash and burn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not focus on that. Let's just make sure he knows how to use his basic bike skills, things like your brakes, knowing where your derailleur is. So we're gonna jump into it, show Brian some of the basics, and then we'll get out there and start doing some real tutorials. I need to be out here with these bugs. I need my latte. That butt back. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Sure. All, right. All right, so one of the first things we're going to talk about on your mountain bike, and one of the most powerful and dangerous things on the mountain bike, is your brakes. Brakes are a great thing. They help you slow down, they help you stop. But if you don't know the difference between your front and your rear brake and the purpose of them, they can send you over the bike pretty quickly. So Brian, you have your front brake on the left, your back brake on the right. That's correct. First step, <laughs> you got that. All right, so when it comes to your front brake, your front brake is gonna be slow pressure. If you lock this brake up, it's going to stop and send you over the bars. We don't want Brian to crash. Now your back brake, is more of just your slow down. You don't want to <laughs> skid. If you lock on this back brake, you're going to skid, which means you lose all your traction. So most of your stopping power comes from the front, but you want a lot of control on that brake. And then you also slow with your back brake, but you don't want to lock it up. You don't want to skid. So Brian's on his bike now. We're going to have him pick up a little bit of speed. And then I just want you to test that front brake. So now just test that front brake. Come to a nice stop. See how you start to lean over the bike a little bit forward? So whenever you're using your front brake, one of the best things you can do is kind of lean your weight back a little bit. All of your momentum is going forward. When you hit that front brake, the bike's stopping and you're not. So if you lean your weight back a little bit, it's gonna make you a little more comfortable. There you go, nice. Now I want you to go around and try out the rear brake. Let's try out the rear brake. All right, so see what Brian did there? He skidded, he squeezed the brake too hard, he lost all his traction. A little more subtle, I want you to just slow yourself down with that rear brake. Nice. It's all about control. These brakes are very strong, but as you can see, with just a couple tries, Brian is starting to get used to it. So your front brake is all of your power, your serious stopping, your back brake just helps you slow down. Next up, we're gonna check out Brian's dropper post. Make sure he knows how to use that. If you haven't seen a dropper post, it's basically usually a spring-powered mechanism. It can also be hydraulic, but it allows your seat to go up and down without you having to pull it up and down. So when he wants to put it down, he has a lever up front here. Now he pushes the lever. Push the seat down, it locks in place. If he wants it to pop back up, he'll push the lever, seat pops up. So when you're first getting on your bike, you just got your dropper. When you try to get on your bike, you wanna make sure you drop your dropper first. It's gonna make getting on your bike a lot easier. Boom, now Brian can step over his bike a lot easier. And then the goal is once you're riding, he pops the seat up and that's his pedaling position. So now if Brian was gonna go into something a little chunkier, a little downhill maybe, he can actually push that button, drop his seat down, and then he'll be in a much more comfortable riding position. It allows you to get lower on the bike which means he's gonna be a lot more comfortable. His balance is gonna be very centered. Which it takes some getting used to. First few times you do it, I actually rode behind Jimmy and some other guys and watched when they were dropping and lifting their post. Found myself constantly dropping my post, then lifting it as soon as I hit an uphill. But you don't have to do that. You can leave it down while you're going up your hill until you really need that strength to keep going. The next thing we're gonna talk about with Brian is Brian's riding position. Whenever you're riding, your momentum is always going forward. You have to make sure that your body weight is centered over the bike. The lower you can stay on the bike, the more you can make your body one with the bike the more comfortable you're gonna be. So there's two general positions. There's gonna be your pedaling position and your attack position. So as you can see right now, Brian is in your basic pedaling position. His seat is up, his body weight is centered over the seat where his butt is. This is pretty much your basic spot. So whenever you're pedaling uphill, whenever you're just roaming around the trails, this is your basic position. This is a position you wanna get comfortable in. As you can see, he's doing some small turns. He can stop pedaling, has general balance, all things you can work on at home. Now the next position we're gonna talk about is the attack position. Now, whenever you're going through any chunk over any roots, Brian's gonna shift his weight back. He's gonna get his elbows out and bend those knees a bit. This is what you call your attack position. Again, attack position, his elbows are out, his knees are bent, he's slightly back over the bike. This is your safety spot. So if you're not pedaling, if you're going downhill, this is where you wanna be. Get comfortable there. 
So the next thing we're going to talk about with Brian is knowing what your derailleur is and where it is. If you break your derailleur in the woods, if you hit it on a rock, your bike will no longer be able to be pedaled. It's the one thing you always want to protect on your bike. If we look at Brian's bike here, on the right hand side is what you call the drive side. So on the drive side, this is what drives the bike. So you have your chain, your front chain ring, your cassette. This right here is your derailleur. This derailleur, while it may look tough, is actually pretty nimble. I can actually wobble it with my hand, but this makes sure that your chain is guided through your cassette, keeps your gears from skipping, and allows you to adjust your gears up and down to adjust your pedaling harder and easier. That being said, as you can see, this hangs pretty low. When you're riding through things like rocks or roots, you want to make sure that you don't hit this. If you hit this, it can bend pretty easily, and if it's out of whack, it's going to screw up your whole ride. So know where your derailleur is. Always be conscious of that, and make sure you're not hitting that, because it's going to ruin your ride real quick. Yeah. No so the next thing we're going to talk about with Brian is shifting. So he has a 1 by 11 on his bike, which means he has 11 gears to go through. One ring in the front, so 1 by 11 rings in the back, 1 by 11. The bigger the ring, the easier it is for Brian to pedal. The smaller the ring, the harder it is for Brian to pedal. But Brian has this little shifter up here, so he can shift up and down with these levers this is going to be easier and then the bottom one is usually harder. Now the one thing to note about shifting, you always want to shift when you're not under power. So we have a small hill right here that Brian's going to pedal up. So what Brian's going to do is loop around, make sure he's in the right gear for this hill, a nice light gear, and then he's going to make it, it's going to be a lot easier to pedal up that hill. So he's already shifted to his second biggest ring, gets nice and comfortable, easy spin, and he's allowed to tack that hill. Now whenever you're climbing, as you can see, Brian is seated. Seated is always easier. It keeps your weight over the rear wheel and makes it easier to pedal and keep traction going uphill. Now when Brian's going to go back down the hill, he's going to shift back into a bigger gear. He's going to get into that attack mode, elbows out. And it's going to keep it nice and smooth down this hill. So what you don't want to do is approach the hill in too big of a gear and then try to shift down while you're going up. As you can see, the bike's making a lot of noises, it's not happy. So always shift before a hill and try not to shift under power or you could ruin your drivetrain. See now Brian tried to pedal up the hill. He tried to shift while going up. His chain popped off the ring and now he has to fix it. Bad Ooh. Brian. Boo. Brian will learn from this. Brian will not do it again. So the last thing we're going to talk about is your head position and staying alert on the trail. Now when I first met Brian and Brian started riding, Brian would come into a section, a little downhill section, and he's always looking down. Most riders always have this urge to look down in front of you. Now that's actually going to be pretty dangerous. You always want to have your head up and you want to be looking ahead. So now in this time when Brian's coming down, we want to make sure his eyes are looking up the trail. You always want to be looking ahead. You want to be looking for other riders. You want to be looking for any obstacles in your way. It's going to make your ride safer for you, for others. It's also going to make your life a lot easier in preparing for obstacles that are coming up in front of you. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> so that's it for the riding basics. This is Brian's first ride. Those are some of the skills that you want to make sure that you have and just a basic understanding of the bike. We'll see you in the next videos. We'll get into some details about doing drops, manuals, some other skills that can help you become more of an advanced rider. You ready to ride, Brian? Yeah, baby. Let's do this. Let's do it. Like my